so welcome back to another vlogtober video and another cook with me so i am going to be making this recipe i'm actually going to be marrying two recipes together so this recipe right here is from peace love and low carb it's called the keto buffalo chicken tenders and then i'm going to be using also her garlic chicken wing recipe but i can't find my paper copy of the recipe that i had used before but i will link it down below so what i'm using from this recipe is i'm using the breading for the chicken tenders and then from the other recipe i'm using the garlic parmesan sauce because we actually don't have any um buffalo sauce to make the buffalo wings so when i made this before i just married the parmesan sauce to the to these chicken wings and this is a very good recipe um, I didn't realize, and I've been doing keto probably now for about two months, maybe a little bit more, that I could still fry things because I actually haven't fried things in years until I made the shrimp the other time. But what I um, have been able to find with this recipe is she actually used the pork rinds and made that the coating and that turned out so, so well. I mean, it was crispy, it was crunchy. Um, Alana bit into one and I heard some sounds and I'm like, what is that? And she was like, mom, it's a chicken. It was crunchy. So it's really good. So let me share with you the ingredients because this is online. You can find this on her website. Two cups of crushed pork rinds, a three-fourths cup finely grated Parmesan cheese, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon Italian seasoning, one teaspoon onion powder, two large eggs, one and a half pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast. We only have six tenderloins, um, so I'm just gonna make those six. One cup of buffalo wing sauce and then the butter. So of course for the buffalo wing sauce, I'm subbing in Parmesan cheese and I will be using the butter as well. So you take your pork rinds and your, uh, you grind them up in your food processor, which is what we did here. And then we also used um, all of the seasonings and then we put in the Parmesan cheese. Now we made these yesterday, so that's why that looks a little bit more. And I like to keep my bag so I'm not wasting a lot of dishes. And then it just calls for you to take two eggs and mix those together. So again, just to keep from wasting dishes or doing the dishes, I'm actually gonna break my eggs into this bag. Then I'm going to just get all the air out, close my bag, and then I'm just gonna squish my eggs. So I'm just squishing the eggs to get them all mixed up. Now I'm not doing any seasoning of the chicken. Normally I would season my chicken, but we already put seasonings into this, um, into the pork rind mixture. Again, normally I would, um, Season my chicken, but I've already put, by Felicia, by Felicia, um, the seasonings into the pork rind mixture, so I'm not going to season the chicken again. And so I'm just going to do this into my Ziploc bag just to get my egg all mixed up. So this is going to be the coating and then another coating. So I've got a, kind of got like a dredging station going on. I'm going to turn that down just a smidge. I don't want my oil to get overheated. I'm using coconut oil and I'm using a little bit of avocado oil. So I've got two stations here. And I'm going to be taking my chicken tenders. I'm just using tenderloins. Going into the egg mixture. All six of my tenderloins, which is all I have. So that's two a piece. I'm going to put mine on a salad. Then I'm going to just toss that around in that mixture. Toss it around. I did not. It's getting a little hotter than I would like. So move that off and turn that down a smidge. I don't want it to burn, but I do want it to um, be hot. So I just moved my oil off a smidge. Okay. So my chicken is now um, coated with my egg. And the next thing I'm gonna do, can somebody grab me a tongue or no? 
So I'm going to take my chicken out of the egg mixture, throw it into the pork rind mixture. Remember, this is pork rind, crushed pork rinds with all of my seasonings and my Parmesan cheese. Oil back on the heat. And then here's my chicken tender that is coated now. And it's going into my fry pan. You do want to make sure that your oil is hot so that it just doesn't sit in there, but it actually does begin to fry. So I did turn it back up just a smidge. Okay, you guys, so I have fried up the chicken, and this is what it looks like. I'm going to move that off for just a sec, just so you can get a good look. After you fry the chicken in the pork rinds, I mean, it is actually fried up really well. And then we're going to, so that's the part of the buffalo chicken recipe. So the next part I'm going to do is the part of the um, garlic parmesan wing recipe. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fry pan that I used earlier to fry up the chicken and then I'm going to put in a stick of butter and I'm going to let that melt real good. So I got my oil back on, I mean my heat back up, the heat back up and I'm just letting this, I poured the oil off just so, but I didn't want to waste another pan. You can actually do this in another pan. You can do it in a saute dish, I mean a saute pan, however you want to do it. I just did not want to waste another uh, dish to wash because it's almost 8 o'clock here. And I have ladies meeting at 9, so I'm trying to have as less as possible. Now these little crumbles, they were what was left in the pork rinds in the breading bag. So I just dumped all of the excess breading off and I just fried those as well make a nice little crunchy treat so to this I'm going to add in about two tablespoons or so of garlic we like garlic at our house it may not be something your family enjoys so definitely temper that with what your family will eat. And we're just going to move this around to get the garlic kind of toasting here. I love the smell of butter and garlic. So once that garlic starts to cook, this really, in a sense, is all done. I just want to give that garlic a little bit of color. Not burned, but just to get it that perfumey smell going. Once that's done there, I'm simply going to take my chicken and I'm going to lay it all back in the pan. I did this in a bowl when I did it previous. But you can do it in the pan as well. And so again, I had six of those chicken tenders. That's what I'm putting back into here. And then I'm also going to put these little fried remnants of pork rind in here as well. And then we're just going to take this and move it around, get it all coated with the butter and garlic, get everything nicely coated with the butter and garlic. Pan still hot, heat still on. You want to get everything nice and coated. Just move it around. You don't want to break down the breading from the chicken because this is a beautiful coating of breading. And the last thing you're going to add are a couple of tablespoons of your Parmesan cheese. 
to say about three tablespoons. You can go ahead and cut your heat off. And then again, you're just going to gently move that butter sauce around so that your Parmesan chicken is nice and coated. So I'm going to serve mine up as so. Have a bed of spinach here. I'm going to sit two of these on my plate on top of my spinach. And I'm going to get a couple of those little extra Parmesan, I mean, those extra little pork, really with the fingers. Some of those pork rinds. And you really don't need to have any dressing. Really? What those little fingers? You don't need to have any dressing on there. You can. And then Jackson having his with green beans that we made last night. These are really good. I'll have to make these as well. So Jackson's having two with green beans. But um, next time, um, could you make them in the oven? Yeah, I will. Jackson's having two with green beans. And then Alana's just having plain. So I'll give Jackson a few of those. And so there it is, Parmesan chicken tenders using two different peace, love, and low-carb recipes. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Two different variations of the same chicken. There we have it. So thank you guys so much for stopping by our channel and we'll see you next time we cook keto. Bye now.